Good evening, everyone. Alright, I can hit L3 for this. Welcome to another Feeling Thursday. King of Fighters 15 Battle Lounge with the 2MK team. I'm going to be fighting with the crackling of the mic today, specifically trying to hold my head as... Yeah, I think I can manage to hold my head as straight as possible. But there will still be some, still waiting on the cable, sorry. We'll see what we can Round avoid on one. that end. Alright, weeks of DNF will probably have changed some of the feelings we have on this matter. Yep. But, fortunately, one of the things we like about this game the most is that it didn't really change too much with the way that it plays any other time KOF games were available. And we started as a group playing games with KOF. I did it twice. It's also a game that drastically, more than others, rewards neutral and spacing yourself just outside the opponent's strike range. Knowing exactly which one to use, therefore, is the one you really need, skill-wise. But of course, We've been learning more and more lately that because it rewards that and we've already learned it so much, the main thing we should be looking for as a group is more damage. Alright, seems my sound check people have told me I needed to speak up slightly, but that's probably fine. Ready? I can definitely manage that, at least. Alright, also getting that yet, that move does not go far in this first game. It is one thing you will have to learn in this game. So we mention it nearly every stream. The X moves in this game are for punishing things. They are not necessarily usually to make you stronger. Certain characters have moves that are not specifically faster, and those can be used to get longer combos. But quite a lot of the time, if the move isn't likely to be able to combo into anything, or it hasn't been at set up so that it can combo into anything, the main thing it's going to give you is speed in terms of startup. And sometimes, different hitboxes in terms of range, it doesn't always seem to grant as much invincibility, but that's actually not something you get up from EX moves all that often. Uh oh. I am playing a bit more Iori today, partially because people have had more time with our Iori bot. So if they're learning damage, that's a good space to be. And then I can like do Shirby things after. So that I have more chance of actually being able to fight at the level required to actually win, while still giving the maximum amount of experience in that space. That late. I feel like there are cancels for her that I'm not doing correctly, but I have to look them up. The moves should go into each other. Winner. 
Fortunately, I have lots of teams with Yuri in it. I just have to make sure to pick people in the right order. In fact, do I even have any that don't have Yuri in it right now? But I'm not stopping to set up such a team now, particularly given that today is not a day where I'm supposed to. Sun and I have been through the Joe vs. Geese matchup a little bit. But the main thing you generally care about is the fact that Joe, despite having lots of range, is still, strictly speaking, reactable. Now, that does not mean that I should be trying this because it's hard, and sometimes just attacking to keep control of the fight is a better idea, but you could do it if you had to. Because Joke is easily discouraged from playing the Replicant versus Hurricane Upper game, it's easier to expect more things are possible. Perfectly spaced, always remember that that move does move forward very slightly. You do need to keep blocking it. You could try to roll through it, but sometimes if it hasn't moved yet, you still get hit. This is much less predictable, and because of the way their projectiles interact, specifically the way Robert sends his out in the first place, it's not necessarily a good idea for Geese to be doing double replicating play for very long. That's another move where the EX is actually doing something different to help you. Instead of going straight into the air, Geese will do a strike first, which helps you get into the position you want to more easily. You should think more that this is a positional tool than the usual version, which your opponent will just figure out a way around and dodge or whatever. The problem with that matchup is that mostly Iori Bot uses tools that I don't use in the matchup. There's not a lot of good reason to use the overhead things and so on. Here though, I need those things, so we're going to see more of it. And of course, now my opponent has more reason to just hit me out of them. I still haven't figured out what to do the second half of that. Another good thing for certain EX moves, because they have that incredibly quick startup, 
is that if you feel as if you don't have another option, they can be a good whiff punish. This is particularly true for Iori's. I actually just forgot what that move is called. We're going to continue this way, I think. Mostly because we find Yashiro versus Mary to be fun. main things these two have that helps them out is that they both fight from a range where the other doesn't necessarily have good punishes for their stuff. They can definitely make mistakes and be based into making mistakes, but if you just defend, the reason why this becomes such a brawl is because if you just defend it's almost impossible to ever stop your opponent. They just keep on repositioning correctly and you'll never get anything. Even that situation where Mary is trying to use an unlockable grab, the spacing they tend to occupy means you're usually either not going to hit with it in the first place, or the Astro player will just jump out. Sometimes they can even hit you, but I think it's quite a bit harder. I don't remember if it's a jump like kick that does it. Here we have the opposite situation. Nearly every hit these two throw at each other is punishable. You never get to hit another button, basically. You can try going for things that are more rewarding if they hit, but they're also even more punishable when they don't. And of course, there's that risk. to be a light. Slipping through your opponent's defense does help a lot. Because it does, in fact, make them more likely to be defensive. But bearing in mind that that only works if they want to stop you from doing moves and not just block, you have to think about how to get around that plan. I think I need an EX there. <laughs> but we've gone straight from a match in which Yuri uppercuts a lot in order to whiff punish things to a match where Yuri should never uppercut ever because Araf will put him in the ground. Also, don't jump. In fact, one of your best bets is to explicitly uppercut because you expect to either trade or whiff, and whiff in a way that will cause the Ralph player to go on offense and therefore give you some options again. But the Ralph kick is a good response to that, simply because most of Yori's main moves for the purpose don't deal with it. Yeah. 
The normal style you'll see for people playing this game is closer to jumping about to make sure you don't hit them. But so far, we haven't met anyone, even the higher level players, who can actually make this intimidating enough to matter. Because you can just get really confident about when you will attack and solve the problem that way. I dropped it. Oh well. Our usual method is to play the winner stays on, but drop after three matches of winning. So I'm shifting to back now and hopefully not having as much trouble as I do in this game normally doing that. But you're definitely going to get to see a different match up here. Alright, let's see what we get. Normally this is done easier by having player 2 just press in and then not confirming. Because this will be better, it puts you back at the top of the match for whatever reason, so it's an easier and probably more useful way to set that up. You can't see it here obviously because there are only three of us in the lounge, but if you do press in, I guess we'll see it demonstrated here if my opponent, well not my opponent, doesn't press in at all. It looks like Grand Serpent is not ready right now. Probably not. Oh, no, there we go. Anyways, bear it in mind when you're in big lounges that you can pass your turn by not pressing in, and that your opponent passing their turn by not pressing in isn't as big a deal as it is normally. You don't have to put effort into oh well, I should make sure that I don't do this so that this person doesn't end up at the back because they don't end up at the back, at least not in my experience. Maybe it's because I'm lounge host at the time, but in general I've seen the person who doesn't take the match end up back at the top of the list. I should probably just look it up, but not right now because again I'm trying to minimize the crackling in my mic. This is, after all, our EU stream. Normally I mentioned this way earlier, but we didn't have anyone coming in anyway, so... This does mean that if you are in EU, you probably have at least a good connection to some of us, and a really good connection to at least one of us. Assuming your internet is good enough, and that you're probably somewhere near the Atlantic Ocean. You know, close enough. This also applies if you aren't actually in Europe or on the east coast of the US at all. We can still usually manage to have a decent connection. But it does come down to how laggy you are willing to let your game be. This game doesn't really have the type of combos where you're likely to drop them in stuttery lag. Rollback is usually required. Like, big problem rollback. I don't think they show me the rollback frames for other people. No. I feel like there are games that do, but I can't imagine how. Or rather, I can't imagine why it would bother. So you can see that it's definitely a little stuttery, or at least we are seeing it being that way. The interesting thing about certain types of rollback game is that the way that this works is complicated, if you're ever interested. The player that is closer to you, their information often comes through first. And then the game, like, updates the rest. Well, Yashiro has just powered through Joe's movements as usual, and now is faced with a different problem. Robert has a lot more ways to bait Yashiro into doing things, which means your options are basically keep up the pressure a lot, like just forward heavy kick, standing heavy kick, sorry, forward light, forward light kick, 
stand heavy kick. Just keep on hitting. Usually you don't actually care that Robert is blocking all your stuff. In fact, you kind of want him to. But anything less means you normally find yourself trying to outplay a character that can make you make mistakes easier. It's good not to get discouraged when you fight characters like this, simply because that's their design. They're designed to make you whiff, make mistakes, get punished for errors. And if you find this really frustrating, your better bet is almost always to just hit them at max range so that they must block instead of actually trying to break through because breaking through is where you take your damage. But in this game, since it's very meter dependent, that's the decision you're usually making. Unfortunately, Ralph doesn't have as much of a problem doing this because Ralph's moves cover more space and there's more so the timing that's a problem. He can just literally walk down Robert if he wants. Because Robert can't afford to do as many risky things. Even when he's not actually like... Even when the Ralph player is not necessarily like super strong at defense, you can generally get away with it. Because Robert doesn't do a lot of damage except with jumping and Ralph can handle the jump a little bit more easily than other characters. So you can just live up to the character's personality, so you could say, just walk forward and don't care, your opponent can't do anything about it. But now we are switching back to a place where that's no longer true, because Kyo has just enough point armor on things to actually counterattack. So you see Ralph having to use more options from further away. But note, I'm only talking about the capacity to walk him down. The Kyo player is much more likely to both attack and just stay there. Like, much less, much more fearlessly just stay in their position. If you're lucky with Ralph, you will land a big hit that sends them flying and get them to the corner that way, but there's also no reason that Kyo will want to stay there. Part of another reason this causes Ralph some issues is simply that the character works a lot better when you know where your opponent is going to stay. Either because it will help you stay safer on your own attacks, or because you just like being able to walk up to a very specific distance, since Ralph doesn't have a lot of attacks that cover a lot of space, he's very precisely striking specific spaces. Even his rushing moves are still more so just a vector that you can read, and not a confusing thing that he has thrown at you. We're halfway through stream and therefore I do in fact change to geese because my opponent needs some practice in this matchup. One of Yashiro's greatest strengths in this matchup is the leap. Basically, there's no good reason to use Rapuken unless Yashiro is playing very aggressively. And since Rapuken is a ground projectile, that can be combined with just jumping, hopping, those sorts of things. So you don't really want to throw the Rapukin too much. It doesn't help. Fortunately, you also don't care because Geese has slightly better range than Yashiro in a lot of places. Meaning that the Yashiro player tends to have to be more daring regardless of what's happening. But 
but it's that range that's going to cause you problems from Geese's side if you don't try to use at least this. And you must use it from the right range, or you will be kicked. Geese defends himself pretty well when using this move. Spacing-wise. And it has a counterintuitive response that Yashiro needs to have, so at least you've put stress on your opponent using it. Generally against that move you should jump. Not with most people, but Yashiro should jump. Because this game cares a lot about the hitboxes of people and it tends to put them closer to its normal spacing than some other games do. So if you have a move that keeps you very lateral in the air, it's actually likely to be very strong against a character who's trying to aim at a specific spot. Not worth it even a little bit, but I'm annoying that way. Whip can handle geese mostly by neutral jumping or jumping preemptively. She doesn't get a lot of damage out of doing it that I'm aware of, but if you're being harassed, just jumping and hitting as much space in front of you with, as possible with your whip will usually solve the problem. I went under too far. I also find that, personally, I don't get Yori's hot blowback to work really well in this matchup. Not just because I can't hot blowback all the time. For various reasons, I'm really not good at doing hops with just the short 9 tap. I think I hit it for one frame too long, consistently. And therefore I must use the 9-1 or up forward down back method to get my stuff. Like that. This isn't too hard, I just want to practice doing it the other way sometimes. Because I would like to be able to be unpredictable for my opponent without... What's the best way to put that? Being confused, let's say? Like, if I press it and I try to get the hop and I don't get the hop, I can adapt to the fact that I felt I didn't get it. But my opponent can't necessarily read me. They're just going, did you hop or not? Ah, yes. Invincibility that I often forget about. It's not necessarily worth not using the meter, even though Ralph does get better combos off that than you might expect given what the move does. But the combos are also unintuitive, so it's not necessarily a good enough reason to not deal with your Ralph players that way. I'm not actually sure whether or not Shermie should be encouraging Ralph to stay on the ground, and that is the outcome you should be doing, aiming for. But, so far, I definitely know that Ralph being in the air does not give me as many counters as I feel it gave me in prior games. He doesn't easily get grabbed by her anti-air, he slips under her anti-air button, or trades with it, And I think usually the thing I normally use against jumping opponents doesn't work against Ralph's diving punch at all. So, for now I'm still working from the perspective that I just want Ralph to stay grounded so that Shermie can actually grab. But in order for this to work, you can't use the option of trying to get behind Ralph using her spinning kick because he'll mostly just ignore you.
you can play riskily, of course, and just not worry about that. Go for the big reads and the outplay on every move, but eventually you are basically facing a character that will take most of your life. And this game has a lot of touch of death combos once people have enough meter. It's part of the reason why many people online will play the way they do, because they don't want to use meter in neutral for anything, if they don't have to. So avoiding having to interact in neutral is usually the better way to deal with that. Controlling where Joe is on the screen is your best bet here. And you know, not dropping your combos helps too. Because he can't defend this entire space in front of him, <coughs> you want your opponent to be not thinking about the slicer slide at the time that you do it. Iori's methodology is very similar, in fact. You can just harass Joe and make the player want to hit the button, but never actually benefit from hitting the button. And then just trade for the kill if you need to, but you'd also have to learn which of your moves actually kill with the trade. I salute whoever went to the trouble of putting that merry-go-round in the background and making it work to that level. The weird chipmunk, bear, plushy, maybe less so, but I guess that's just a surveillance camera probably, right? Ah, uh, the classic matchup. Neutral jump time. I wonder if I should have gone for the actual neutral jump. Yeah, told me. His rushing super is in fact an anti-air if you really need it to be. But don't go risking trying to use it as one. Yori will have to deal with Kyo powering through certain things. And you'll notice I never went for the clock home because at this point that would just make my opponent defensive and I don't really want to. However, Kyo, um, Kyo can't really power through Shermie stuff. In fact, most of the time he'll just get punished for doing anything. That matchup is often played more with footsies with a larger amount of time spent deciding whether or not to jump or to react with jump. Also, I need this jacket. Back to 
the beach we go. I think I like this stage slightly better in the daytime. Which is nearly never true. It isn't even that I don't like stages at sunset. In fact, I normally do. I just don't like this one. Maybe it changes the color tones on the giant shark head. So right, again, no Rapukins as a main concept, and no pushing into Yashiro space for no reason. This though will help a little bit, but it only helps if you convince the player defending is important. And not just defending in the sense of, I'm going to power through your stuff because I don't care. Because you know, Yashiro will just do that. You have to convince them, you have to block. You have to block and you have to try to hit me so I don't rush at you. But you will get powered through. It makes Yashiro a very good point character if your opponent has chosen to play Geese as theirs. I don't think that I don't think there's a situation or even a style where that can be a bad choice. If you have Yashiro in your team and you believe your opponent is going to play Geese Point, just put Yashiro there and hope for the best. You might get pressured into death, you might get outplayed in some way, but you're certainly not going to feel as if you're never getting to do anything. Now I get the low. Because of the way Iori moves, the methodology used against Geese doesn't work as well, specifically the neutral jump and big damage thing. In fact, you can often use the fireball specifically to punish her for stuff. It's not that good to use it preemptively, but it depends on whether or not the whip player is trying to hit you most of the time in neutral. If they're not, you have much less reason to use it. So if your opponent has chosen space control as their main method of fighting you, you will need the fireball more simply to basically whiff punish stuff they did. As Yori doesn't seem to have other really great options for this, and her long recovery means that even if you didn't cause the fireball to immediately touch one of her extended hurt bosses, she must at least block, and most of the time I think the fireball even gets through before she can. This is the opposite situation in every way. Ralph will move out of the way, Ralph will block it nearly every time it needs to be blocked, just don't bother. You have to have a really good read on your opponent, not to mention the invincible move you just saw. You have to have a really good read on your opponent before it's a good idea to just throw Iori's ground spark at Ralph. And similarly, it's not a great idea to hop. We may get back to that later, in terms of what is optimal to do in that matchup, let's say. Since I've already believe I said, don't uppercut, don't jump. Don't throw fireballs. You get the idea. But remember what I mentioned before, my thought here is, make Ralph stay still. Now sometimes, the move you want to use is precisely for that purpose, but it's not just stay still, please stay on the ground. However, there is a timing at which this changes, and my opponent has already basically adapted to it. When Jeremy has too much meter, the matchup is different. 
And if you're out of range of that, you can catch it preemptively specific ways. In fact, I think, I think that was my opponent attempting to fake me out to get me to do the super. And I'm not really sure whether or not, I just, my hands just did things in that moment, so I'm not sure if I was trying for super, but I don't feel like I was. I feel like the instinct for that moment resolved itself. You can just use the regular one. But if you use the super, I think it does in fact miss because of a difference in startup or something. Worth testing some more of. But we don't necessarily have a Ralph bot to do that testing with yet. Which is probably one of the next things we should work on. After all, Ralph is a different enough style of character. But at the moment, the problem would be that people are still working on Iori Bot, I think. And the game only saves one bot at a time. So, to move on is a much bigger deal. Though it's very easy to re-enter the Iori Bot for most of us, shifting back and forth, in the sense that you wouldn't want to be in development for Ralph Bot and not be sure you were going to finish it. If you didn't finish it and your player decided, oh well I would like to go back to Iori, now getting Ralph back in to continue the testing is harder, since it's less refined. So I think we're going to wait a little longer until people are pretty sure that they're done with Yori enough that they won't be going back mid-Ralph testing. Here we go. So now that we've seen the change, if I do slice her enough, just at the right spaces, the opponent is likely to stay more so in place and let me do more things in neutral. Another situation where mostly I just want my opponent to keep quiet long enough for me to do what I want. This is not, however, a full screen mix up. If it feels that way, it's usually because you haven't found the right space to throw the hurricane attack from where Mary will jump into it. Matt's range slicer is a useful thing for her, but it's also a useful thing for Joe. Robert's a little different in that she doesn't care if Robert attacks or not. The only thing she cares about is, do I confirm the counter attack or not? You can almost spam that move, I think. Similarly, at the correct range, that will evade a lot of Robert's other hits, like this. This is matchup is I feel is really difficult from the Robert side, again because this game is so weird about hitboxes sometimes. She escapes too easily because of the way she positions herself in the air. Looking good though, only three roll back frames despite the ping. The ping isn't even bad. Notable, but not bad. Neutral jump time. I feel like Mary does this better than Iori, and maybe that's why I think Iori will manage more than he does. Or I'm just hitting the wrong button. I was gonna try to bait that, but now I remembered this game has chip damage and it wouldn't have worked anyway. I think that is enough chip damage to kill me. Particularly from the EX. So that was just a bad choice in every way. No, that's not it. Well, rather, I don't know because my opponent wasn't doing the same thing. Doesn't feel like that's right. I should have been the light one. That should have been a hop.
Ooh, perfectly done. You can do hop versions of neutral jump in much the same way. If you're good enough at flicking the stick or pad, straight neutral, like E8, in numpad notation, down to down back, and I think down to just straight down also works. Because the really thing you're caring about is the way Chaos input buffer works. I think I should press, or rather, let myself time out here again. And I guess I can talk about that input buffer for a short time. King of Fighters uses a special system where it's not really trying to make sure that your moves are happening. Oh, a little card. That's what that meant. It's not really trying to make sure that your moves are happening the way you expect them to. It's trying to make sure that you get your moves based on what is happening in certain frames of the game, I think. I don't know a good way to explain this, actually. In general, though, if you find that your moves aren't happening, the way to make the game check harder whether or not you try to do a move is to hold the button down. But this doesn't work for directions. Usually directions have the other problem, where the game is trying to figure out how long you pressed it and what you really wanted to happen. And for something like a jump, where even the slightest tap should start a huge action, you have this to deal with. Fortunately, King of Fighters has enough startup frames on a jump, and even on the jump itself, that if you can press something else, specifically a different direction, at the moment you do the jump, and that press gets in before the end of the pre-jump frames, and I think two frames after that, it will know, okay, you meant to hop, not to jump, and therefore I will treat this as a hop and not a jump. Hyper hops are a similar but slightly different thing based on dashing. It's something you relatively easily adapt to, I feel, so don't be too frustrated by it at the beginning if you're used to playing games with more specific inputs, where you want to very quickly release your button in order to keep your combo going or anything similar. But that's another perfect example of where it can come up and be a problem. Since KOF throws are a matter of holding forward and in many cases kind of holding the throw button, your quarter circle forward moves, depending on how you execute it from block, might end up coming out instead of your throw sometimes. But technically, a throw will actually work if you've only pressed the attack button for a short time. It's the forward, I believe, that you need to hold. And if you get used to that, you'll be able to prevent having issues with your throws as often. Of course, Kirov has other things that make your throws not work perfectly, so be careful about that. Actually, I'm not sure whether or not the game is more likely to try to hit a kick or a punch just because you actually held down the button. But you can definitely give it a try on your end. Just tap the throw button, but keep holding the forward when you want to throw. Which is not exactly intuitive to learn, but it's a throw, you can sort of learn it. The situation in which you're trying to do it is not a situation where you're caring about a lot of other options. And therefore you could train yourself, I think, to get it right. Ralph does not have as many ways to dodge Robert's movement as Mary does, and Ralph is bulkier and therefore tends to not be able to like lie down in the air and get this to work perfectly. It's a much bigger commitment, I'd say, from Ralph's side to deal with Robert's offense. 
But it isn't necessarily... There you go. It isn't necessarily impossible because Ralph's Strata Strike is so good. Ralph's just regular blowback is good enough to deal with a lot of situations if you really need to. And of course, neutral is a little different. One problem I found that Ralph has slightly as a character is that the amount of effort and meter you have to put into certain punishes means that he doesn't necessarily do super well in those positions. Not all of Ralph's good combos require EX moves, but there are enough of them that if you are not confident in them, you might end up a little stressed out. Alright, we've had enough of the Joe versus Mary matchup for now. Mainly because there's nothing specific that Joe needs to learn there other than stand precisely here. So I hope that Sun will forgive me for switching, given that it's not the easiest thing to learn, but it's not really something you pick up a lot of by just fighting at max level, or at max level for whatever you're doing. Alright, Sun version. It's about to be a party up in here! So if Joe shields well in front of him, and it's not as if, in general, you can just ignore this with geese. You have to move too close and do too many specific perfect things. It's another one of those situations where you are specifically aiming to have your opponent block your stuff. I do not care about Joe blocking anything I throw out. In fact, the more Joel blocks, the better for me. Oh, we're having that weird KOF lag again. Yep. If even that is happening, we are definitely at that weird point in us. We still don't know why, but there's definitely a You've been playing too long, now crazy stuff is going to start happening with your connection. This seems to not even matter who is playing, or how good their connection was between before. It's really tempting me to make these specific streams like 45 minutes instead, just so we don't reach this point. But, sometimes it happens earlier too, so who knows. It doesn't make this one particularly unplayable, it's just annoying. It does mean you will miss time a lot of Geese's counters though, if you're still trying to do it on this style of lag, because Robert will change his flow. So, since we've reached this point, I guess I will close up stream after this fight, and probably not pay too much attention to this one. So it goes sometimes. Hopefully we'll get another hour or so later during our NA stream. Whether or not we have that NA stream may depend on some other factors, but it's almost always going to happen. You'll know because you can check it out to verify that we are streaming on our Twitter 2 underscore MK underscore FGC. The aforementioned bots for this game, we only have one, Iori-Bot is available at 2-mk.org. Under KOF bots.
Ooh, let me finish my combo. Since we have no bot ready, there will be no stream content tomorrow, as usual. And you can expect your next fix from us to be the usual 60 times Dead or Alive 6 Battle Lounge. On Saturday. Whether or not we have an EU stream for that, I can't say. Sunday, of course, will bring us around to Do Not Falter, our DNF duel battle lounges. As usual, they will be at 7.30, I believe, Central European time and 7.30 Eastern. If you're a Street Fighter V fan, you can join us on Monday for Mishmashing, our battle lounge of that game. And let's call them anime fans, people who don't necessarily think DNF Duel is the main thing. You can find our Tuesday Milk and Wednesday Night in Birth content instead. But with that kick, we have come to the end of the stream for tonight. Night if you're in Europe anyway. This has been Brilliant14 to MK. Good luck with your training. Good night, everyone.